Well, that's smooth. You guys know I love odd guns. This one, I'm not even sure I have the, the full correct name. Yeah, so this is the Setme LC, uh, a very short-lived service rifle in Spain uh, from the famous Setme company that was founded by basically the people who went on to found HK, as I'm sure most of your viewers probably know. And that is Oragear. Very knowledgeable, very trained, dedicated reviewer. Love his stuff, have for years. Thank you. We're ironically only like an hour or so apart from one another, mm -hmm. but our schedules never interlock. We finally were able to make it happen. And so we're gonna shoot some weird stuff today, including this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, basically if anyone's familiar with like the HK G3, uh, which started life as the Setme Model C, that was kind of the old battle rifle that again, the German engineers went to Spain, uh, designed and really refined the roller delay blowback mechanism that was made famous with the G3, MP5, et cetera. Um, and Later on, after those engineers moved back, uh, Spain being part of NATO, they were told by NATO because they were still using the Setme Model C in 308, hey, you need to adopt 556 like the rest of NATO. So they said, fine, but we'll do it our way. And so they basically adapted um, almost like a, a HK-53, uh, whatever the 556 gun was. Um, but they wanted it to use Stanag magazines. Um, so you still have the roller delay blowback with the charging handle up front. Um, no lash out hold open, um, but you can use Stanag magazines instead of those fancy HK magazines. And it feels like it was built out of like tungsten. Yes, yeah, so this is not a light rifle by any means, but between that and the fact that it's roller delay blowback, it actually makes it a very pleasant gun to shoot. Uh, I'm also gonna apologize, we're at my range instead of his range, uh, so it's a little bit louder, so we'll you know work through that as best we can. A whole Just lot busier that. here than I expected. <laughs> yeah, for a, a Monday morning. 9 a.m. on a Monday morning. <laughs> yeah, and now, like I said, this is the Setme LC, so there are differences between this and the standard original version of the Setme. Um, main things being a collapsible, almost like paratrooper stock, so that telescopes in and out with this button here on top. Um, so you can, it clicks in, and then when you push the button on top, it just kind of pops it out, and then you can pull it out the rest of the way. Only the one locking position extended, so there's not like multiple positions. Uh, and then this would ordinarily have a, about 12 and a half inch barrel. Uh, right now it's got a pinned on extension to get it to 16 inches. One day I will SBR this, but today is not that day. So we're running the full 16 inch version of this. Uh, also slightly anachronistic, this is one of the Markelmar reproductions using the new old stock from Spain. Um, so this one has a welded on Picatinny rail that just makes it easier for a modern optic. Uh, originally they would not have had that. There were optics capable versions of these, but it wouldn't have had a Picatinny rail like was that. It, was it the silly claw mount yeah. style? Those things, I don't know if anyone's ever tried the claw mount. Like either you get it just right and it's perfect or you'd never get it right and it's nothing but fighting. At least yeah. that, that's been my experience. Yeah, <laughs> it, it never wants to line up well and as soon as you think you have it zeroed, something comes loose and then it's, you know, yeah. everything goes out the Good. window. Cool. So we're gonna start working our way from the back to front, just showing you some more of the features here. Again, there's gonna be a lot of similarities if we're used to the roller delay guns from HK. Um, again, cause these were the more or less original engineers, but we've got this little button here at the back. You press that in, that releases the stock. It's got basically a little plunger in there so that it kicks it out a little bit uh, to get that initiated. Um, but you've got the two pins holding it on. Again, very similar to other HK stocks and other guns. Now, one note, if you have the regular Setme L, you cannot just get one of the LC stocks to put on here. The carrier itself inside is actually a little <laughs> bit different. Um, so you've got to make sure if you want this, you have to get it this way. And they did not produce a lot of these and a lot of them didn't make it into the United States. I'm um, sure that makes converting uh, wonderfully affordable too. Oh, I'm sure there. it would be. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so again, very HK-esque safety here with the two positions safe and fire. Um, I would imagine that the military models would have had a third position. I actually don't know that off the top of my head though. So talking about the rear sight here, we do have a adjustable rear sight for elevation. The aperture is uh, 
uncomfortably small, regardless of which aperture you're using. And they're graduated for two and 400 meters. You'll notice this odd button here on the side of the rear sight block. That is actually your bolt catch. So unlike other HKs that have a little locking notch on top where you'd pull the bolt back and lock it in the upward position, this one, I have to pull the bolt back, push in on that button, and that will lock the bolt open. So this doesn't have lash out hold open or anything like that, like other roller delay guns. Um, I just have to manually do that. And if I wanted to, to release the bolt, I can either run the charging handle or I've got this button here on the opposite side. I can push that button in and it'll close the bolt just like that. And just in dry handling this moments before I turn on the cameras, uh, I tried to see if you could do the uh, classic 1911 style support hand thumb reach. And you can, if you've got absurdly sized hands. Yeah, I cannot do that. So I can insert the mag. I cannot quite reach it. Uh, you <laughs> it's know, way up there. My, uh, my little Whopper Junior hands don't facilitate that, unfortunately. And speaking of long reach, uh, there's no paddle magazine release like on other HKs. So you have this really long reach to your magazine release button up front. For some people, that might be a little bit easier for me. That's asking a lot. Um, <laughs> now, the... Ejection port on this thing is noticeably small. It's small enough that you can actually not fully fit a loaded cartridge through there. However, uh, if you do have a live round in the chamber that you're trying to get out, it is still able to uh, hinge its way out. Uh, but that has led to some issues as I've seen on other guns. Again, do that information what you will. Uh, Stanag magazines uh, work with these, so they usually come with Dura mags. Uh, you can also use Lancer mags, but Magpul mags do not work uh, because they Magpul mags are not perfectly Stanag style. Uh, I don't know about the Magpul E mags. That's something I'm curious about, but uh, the GI aluminum or steel mags work really well, as do again the Lancer magazines. Now, moving up again, we've got that charging handle that locks forward. Again, very reminiscent to other HK designs. Um, the rollers on these are pretty stiff um, out of the box. All, all the ones that I've played with take a little bit of breaking in. Uh, to my knowledge, this is not compatible with any of the other aftermarket charging handles from HK guns. It seems to be unique to this one. Now the whole lower handguard here is held in by this pin up by your front sight post. Um, there was uh, RS Regulate did make M-Lock compatible handguards for these. Uh, limited run, they don't exist anymore if you have one. Let me know because I, I would like to get one maybe for this, but uh, we'll see. Uh, front sight, very basic. We've got your typical hooded style front sight, like most HK guns, uh, that you can rotate the front sight drum up and down, kind of like an M16 front sight. Um, you know, pretty rudimentary, but more or less functional if you can actually get your sight picture with that small rear sight. Moving forward, we've got a little sling loop that will swivel. So, uh, again, kind of like the other guns uh, from HK. Uh, and ordinarily, on the full-size rifle versions, there'd be a little locking notch up top. That would actually be for the bayonet, because on the full-size rifles, the bayonet actually mounts above the barrel, which is kind of unique. Uh, there was also a clamp-on style bipod you could get for these uh, that would clamp around these rings here. But in this case, this is all part of the pinned-on extension to get it to 16 inches. Um, so once you SBR this, you just have basically a little three-prong flash hider sitting out in front of here. So um, definitely some oddities, especially as far as disassembly. Um, once you get your pins out here, you have to do this weird kind of dance with your safety to get the whole fire control group out. Um, but once you do have it apart, again, very, very reminiscent to HK internally with the way the rollers and the carrier are designed. Um, so kind of a weird gun. They did not do well in Spanish military service. Uh, so they did not uh, get a lot of use but Mark Omar seems to be making fairly accurate reproductions. Um, again, whether or not they work seems to be a matter of debate, but again, this <laughs> one so far has done really well for me. It's kind of like the G36 we have at home. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> well, and for what it's worth, after the failure of these rifles, as I understand it, uh, Spain did adopt the G36. So uh, it went from the G36 at home to actually being a regular G36. <laughs> Well, let's put some rounds in. I'm really curious to, to feel 5.56 and roller lock. I think I've shot it before, but uh, for those of you unfamiliar with roller lock designs, it has a an interesting way of stretching the recoil impulse. Mm -hmm. Is I think how I'd say it. Yeah. Like 
it spreads it out over a longer period of time, I think, so it helps smooth it out. Yeah, you kind of get this wave instead of a punch. Mm -hmm. And one thing I'll mention real quick too, uh, just like other HK style guns, does have a fluted chamber, so you'll definitely be able to see that from the brass once we start shooting. Does it does it piss off the brass goblins? Uh, you know, not as bad as like the G3s, where it actually has a physical ridge in the brass. Uh, it just gets a nice copper or a, uh, <laughs> carbon lines on the brass. I've, I've, I've created more than a couple of angry brass goblins. <laughs> as they, just to get familiar with it, got a few rounds. Just want to try it out. You know, I, I like odd, different stuff. Let's see if I can do that. I can. The banana hand squid. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's smooth. I wouldn't want to be having to run the safety between drills. It goes past fire as well. Were you, were you aware of that? Yes. <laughs> what happens when you go past fire? Uh, you know, don't let the ATF know, whatever it is. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yep, I did it again. It might be tough to see on camera, but hopefully you guys are seeing the um, the impulse is just that soft push. Um, you're in a bathtub, mm. you sat down and it creates that wave and it hits the back wall and then it comes and just kind of <laughs> rolls over. That's a fantastic analogy. It's like shooting in a bathtub. Yeah. It also ejects brass at approximately the speed of sound, just like it's not visible until it gets about 10 feet away from the gun. It sounds, let's see if we get in the safe position here. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's hitting, the, hitting the gravel and then bouncing an additional like three feet or so. It enables you, that recoil impulse enables you to stay on target as you ride it, I guess. Very similar to, uh, I've got a 7.6239 PTR. Yeah. And it's the same kind of rocky. I should have mentioned should have yeah. brought that. It runs sometimes. And was that it? No. Felt like a stop, but it doesn't lock open. Yeah. Ah! Flinch. All right, so I hold back here. Oh, and yeah. Hit that. And there's the issue of the round not being able to fully fit in the ejection port. Bullet is longer than the ejection port. So from here, finger up inside and sweep. No. Yeah, and I would just try running the charging handle because if you get it out with some gusto, it'll usually hinge its way out. There, well, <laughs> close enough, I guess. A little anticlimactic. All right, let's see someone with more experience run it. Uh, yeah. Like you said, I. The safety is very difficult to actually manipulate, uh, especially while it's in your shoulder. Uh, unfortunately, like the Magpul HK safeties don't fit in here, so I can't put an enlarged one in there. I guess this is where the, this is my safety comes into play. So you can learn to shoot it faster than the recoil impulse. Some of your triples were definitely going quicker. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's just different. Cool. Different. Yeah. All right. So that has been. You set, set me L C, or just set me L. Set me L C. Set me L C. Um, it's a Markle Markle I can never pronounce that. That's the hardest name to say. <laughs> Reproduction. It's a uh, definitely a cool piece. Um, you know when I when I think about militaria that I want to have arms from the Spanish military is not one of them aside from the fact that they did neat stuff like this mm -hmm. like when they're lower locked and some of you may have seen my video on my PTR uh, roller lock in 76239 this recoil impulse is not and obviously it's a letter letter caliber but it's not as abrupt or disruptive as that was uh, it might also be that this thing, I think, weighs more. <laughs> Probably. Yeah. <laughs> this is heavy. Do you know how much this weighs? I, I want to say they're close to seven and a half, eight pounds. 
somewhere in there. And it's all concentrated. It's mm -hmm. all all right here because obviously the stock doesn't weigh anything. Um, so it you've got a lot of mass resisting that movement. Um, really smooth shooter. Have you ever tried accuracy with it? Not really. Just I mostly just do shooting at 25 yards with it. So nothing too crazy. Yeah, I mean it's a fighting carbine, but. Um, yeah, neat piece and beautifully, beautifully made. Um, the, the finish on it is amazing. I can't speak to fitment because I haven't pulled it apart. Uh, this is just a quick look at it, but neat piece. I was so tempted to buy one of these when I saw them hit, um, and I didn't. But now I've shot one, yeah. so thank you. Of course. <laughs> Thanks for watching.